Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today I met up with Daryl, and Daryl has a really cool custom DIY Sprinter camper van conversion that he's going to give us a tour of today. So join us. Thank you very much, Patrick, for allowing me to be on your channel. This is my 2017 Mercedes Benz 170 wheelbase non extended. This comes with a four wheel drive. The main reason we built this van was my wife has a mobility issue and we needed the ability to drive on the beach uh, and also we're avid cyclists. The van was built around the ability to store my tandem bicycle so we can do rail trails across the US as well as do the beach. So welcome and let's go in. One of the first things that we did is we put in two aftermarket swivel seats uh, so that we can have access to the back. The other thing that we've done is in the front, this is our console. The only thing I really did here was added in a backup camera system. Uh, and I do have another one, but with this one, this is a roof mount and this one is from the license plate. This is solar and it's a fantastic system. The system here has all the safety features, lane control access, high low gear on four wheel drive, heated seats. Uh, and this also came with a hydronic 17,000 BTU diesel boiler to preheat the van if I need it, but I've never done that. What we did in the van is when you can see there's a, a step here. Here what we did is we put in a one inch foam floor. Uh, then there's a plywood subfloor with this over top. What we did is we wanted to put in an auxiliary uh, post mount table. And what we could do here is just quickly add this in. and then we have our table mount. The other thing that I did is because I didn't want to run into problems opening the drawer, I had the ability to lift it up and still get in. And this is a carbon fiber tube. So when I'm sitting here, my wife will spin. I'll work on this area and then it's very easy to take in and out. While I'm up here, what we also wanted to do is to create a very safe environment for our dog. And we had an issue with the step down here. So what I did is I created a foam block that's contoured to the step that all we do is we just drop it in and pull it down this way. And then what we did is my dog had a safety harness. We would put her bed here and then this would lock into her harness and we can adjust the length of this just to keep her safe in the van. The other thing we have here is a power step. This is a battery operated power step when the door opens and closes. So when we close the door, it closes and then there's lights on there as well. Also in the van, I did not want to run any diesel. I mean, I did not want to run propane. So I wanted everything in my van to be run off of diesel. So with this is this is my 17,000 BTU hydronic heating system with a blower. And then this right here is my heat exchanger. So the water would actually get heated up and it would almost be like instant hot water. And then here, here what we have is when we go to the beach, this is a, a connection that allows us to do wash our feet off, get rinsed before we go back into the van. So this is just something else that we added. And then we just control the water valve there. The next thing that we did is a lot of the components that I got, I bought from boat and marine stores. So we wanted to put a solid handle here to get in and out of the van. And since all these cabinets are made out of 8020, this is all bolted into the aluminum structure. So as we come back in, I went with a isotherm uh, 12 volt. This only runs off 12 volt, but you can plug it in. Um, and it also has a freezer compartment in here for our ice cream when we go to the beach. The next thing that we have is butcher block countertops on both sides. My wife originally wanted granite and I just didn't think it was a good safety thing. Then here we have a Ruvetti um, 15 inch sink with strainer. So it's still a deep sink when they're hot and cold. And this is a heat resistant tile um, that I put on here. Uh, because we do cook here as well. So our van is configurable depending on what we're doing. So in here is our coffee maker. Down below I have an induction stove. 
Um, we also have a microwave and we want the ability to be able to put these cooking uh, items either inside the van, outside the van, run an extension cord, whatever we decide to do. So we did not want to put an induction stove top into the, into the counter. Now on my center island here, we wanted a galley type area where we could still work here, take a look. Because the other thing we do is our van is really not just for, it's, it's really an adventure van. So we'll take this a lot. We'll go to the beach, bring dinner, have dinner on sunsets. And, and this is where we can set up and eat dinner and have fun. When I set this up, I have two really electrical areas. Before I put in my flooring, I ran conduit. So I have a ton of electrical wires run on both sides of the van. And what I did is I ran one electrical system here and this runs everything on the left side of the van and we have a power switch here this would shut off the main switch and then here this turns off this light that's underneath and then here is my rexon system which we saw outside so this is my heater my hot water heater my fan motor my thermostat and then we have another fuse box here if we wanted to add anything there the other thing that I did is in the van, all the way going out, I have run an electrical raceway system. This goes from the front all the way to the back on both sides of the van and even goes through the shower area. So in the event that we wanted to run additional electric, we can do that. The other thing that I did, the great thing about the 8020 is we've got very narrow passage areas here. So I'm actually able to hide all my electrical and there's an alt, uh, there's also a altitude adjustment system on this for the boiler. And that's all packed into this system as well. Then on the drawers, when I built my 8020 cabinets in the drawer system, what I ended up doing was actually ordering the drawers from a drawer company, and these are very inexpensive. Once you have your cabinets built, you know exactly how to measure for the drawer front. So literally, these come shipped flat. You just glue them together, and then I built um, the, the drawer fronts. All the drawer fronts are made, and the side panels are all made out of balsa wood. The other great thing about this is I did not even cut this. This was all cut by a company down in um, Maryland and they shipped these all flat for me as well. And then all I did was put the Formica top, the Formica on it, and then just the end strips. Then under here, as you can see, we did the front and the back. I have an electrical outlet here. All my PEX plumbing is run there. The other thing that I did is all my hot and cold PEX is in the van, but it's under the subfloor. So it's running under the floor going back and forth from the, um, from the water tank to the water pump. And, and as you noticed, all the drawers have the push to lock buttons. The other thing that I ended up doing is my wife had a hard time grasping onto this. So we ended up putting these little pull knobs on here to open a drawer easier. And then below here, this is a magnetic latch. Under here we have, this is our uh, blower motor, very similar to a radiator. Um, this is where the hot air comes for the furnace. We have our water pump, our filter, and then we have an actuator tank up top to, to keep the air water flow. And they go into a 22 gallon water tank. And then I have an 18 gallon gray tank. The next thing we have is I ran my secondary electrical source to this side. This runs my furnace, my water pumps, my lights. My lights are on three zones. And then when we go into this cabinet here, I have a Magnum inverter. This is the controller for this. This is my Blue Sky um, charge controller indicator. And then in here, we have a secondary breaker that runs this side of the van. So when I want to shut my electricity off completely to the van, all I do is hit this button and the other button on the other side of the van and it's completely closed. And the other thing is you can see, I use uh, pods. So this is a 12 by 12, and then I just fill everything in and we just stack everything in nice. So we fully utilize all the space we have in the van. The ceiling I thought was a little unique on what I did. This is a PVC tongue and groove. It's six inches wide. Um, I love this material. It's nice and clean. And, and not only that, the great thing about this is if this ever does scratch, you do have the ability to fill it, paint it. 
uh, and it's a great product. So, like I said, these are six inch panels. Um, each one I cut down and then these are glued and screwed to a, a furring strip system that's up above the roof. For insulation, we used the 3M Finsulate and the Flex Foil for a vapor battery barrier over that. And then you can see I have all my LED lights here. Uh, and again, all my cabinets are 8020. Um, so even when I did my bathroom, uh, this is a, a product that I use that's used in the RV industry. This is a three quarter inch closed cell system. And I wanted my shower to be very similar to airplanes, where if you look at an airplane, the bathroom is not connected to the ceiling, it sort of floats. So I just have two bolted points here that go into two by fours in the ceiling. But this here is just a C channel 8020 on the side. <clears throat> And then I just put the, the sliding door in as well. Here we have a 24 by 36 inch stainless steel pan that I had custom made. And this goes and drains down below to the 18. I, I put in a Thetford um, cassette tank toilet. And I just love this thing. I like the cassette toilets. The other thing is, is I have a teak floor and I have a, 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 a it's actually a stopper in there that it's from a boat yard because when I decide to use this, then I can just open that and the water goes down. And then we have the shower valves here. The other thing here we have is we love to use this as a, uh, as a closet as well. It's rare that you're in the bathroom. It's more of a storage thing. So we just store everything in these cl clothes bags. So even if we decide to stay at a hotel, we can do that. And you'll see we have the electrical raceway there. The other thing that we did is all of the siding um, for here is a Comatex material. Uh, that I did um, for this and it's the exact same material but a lot thinner. This material I've actually replaced already once before. I had a different bed configuration in here and it took me about 20 minutes to take this panel out and replace it. So even all my cabinets and everything the way it's designed I could easily replace all these cabinets and change the interior view. The next thing we have is the bench seat. And the bench seat here, we have a 22-gallon tank here. I did put in seat belts, but they're not DOT approved because I still wanted some type of security. My wife was the one that picked out this lovely pattern <laughs> on the um, cushions. Uh, we have 110 outlet here. We have a 110 outlet under there, and we had another 110 outlet in the front. Uh, the other thing we wanted to do was put in a Laguna table. And the reason we wanted this is, again, just gives us a lot more flexibility uh, to eat in our dining area. And the other thing that we did is we loved this um, boating type material. All this inlay is rubber, so it really helps things from moving around. These edges prevent items from sliding off. And then this area here allows you just to scoop your crumbs in there to clean the table off. So it's a great system. And I have the matching one in the front. The bed configuration for me was one of my most important things in the van because we have um, multiple bike configurations. And depending where we go, even if we go to the beach, we might want to take the bed out. So this bed is a four inch um, foam. The good thing about this is, and this is my um, screen cover for the window in the front, but this is a tri-fold mattress. So even for this, I can fold this up, put it in a bag, move it out, and then my whole bed system frame is modular. And then here, these are all 8020. Because the contour of the van is different on the side, it's not straight, my previous bed I could never take out because as soon as you lift it, you're scraping the wall. This you actually loosen up these slide and you can take this whole bed out in about 20 minutes. Then on the side here, I have RB components windows with the sliders. For the lockers, we have tons of storage uh, and you can see their electrical raceway going there. And the great thing about the 8020 is even these hinge configurations, it's very easy to adjust it move it, um, and, and that's why I love the product. Even all the fittings just go in, the locking mechanisms. And it's a great, simple way. These upper cabinets here is simply an L-frame that I have bolted into the beams of the van, and also I put in rivet nuts in the sidewall, so these are all bolted into the frame of the vehicle and not into wood. So they're solidly mounted. 
Then the other thing for safety concerns, uh, because I do have diesel in this van and even at night when we run the heater, I want my carbon monoxide detectors as well as my, um, my fire de smoke detectors. And in the back we have a dual max fan um, deluxes with the remotes so we can set these uh, so if a certain temperature the van will kick on and continue to run which we love it So even when the dog was in the van, it was always a good environment So as you can see these the the roof lockers go all the way to the back on both sides We have tons of storage then here. I have my insulated curtain uh, magnetic mount that just goes right over and it just locks and it's nice and easy. The other thing is I did put these marine screws here. My wife has curtains that she has that match the bench seat that, that go on there, but those are also set up for curtains as well. The other thing that we do is we do have an access panel going back to the van, uh, which allows you to go into the back. And we're gonna now transition and show you the garage. Okay. So in my garage, this was the most important part of my build, believe it or not. Because we needed the flexibility to be able to bring all this stuff in and out. Um, as I said, so even here, the number one reason that we built the van was four-wheel drive access to the beach. Island Beach State Park requires a, uh, a, a fishing pole for every person that is there. None of our fishing poles have hooks just anchors um, and then this is the bike the tandem bike that we actually built this whole van around so this is a, a full tandem with a e-bike it's got a 750 watt motor on the back and because my wife has limited mobility this is another trike that we bring uh, if we're going up to the Finger Lakes or in Maine or things like that so she can continue to move around a As you can see when you were inside the van the bed in the back was on an angle And I do that for a couple reasons depending which bike we bring in we might want this up uh, To be able to store bikes as well as I don't want to hit my head every time I'm going into the van So to bring this back down to a flat position All you do is you bring it down and you're locked back in and then here, what I did with this is my bed frame is actually made from a Harbor Freight tri, um, it's a tri-fold uh, ramp system. And all I did was, again, I took the 8020 and I put it in it so it allows me to telescope this in and out and it comes out very quickly. And I think the weight capacity on this was a thousand pounds from what Harbor Freight had said. So now let me walk you through the procedures on removing the bikes. So the first thing you have to do is just remove the tension straps. After that, what I do is I pull the bike out just a little bit, put in the handlebar, lock that in, and then make sure the ramps are aligned up with the two back wheels and slowly wheel it down. So now let me talk to you about the battery system. My uh, battery frame here is all made out of 8020. Uh, one of the things that I did with this is the reason I wanted 8020 is because with this I wanted to make sure that I was super safe and this is all bolted into the floor of the uh, van as well as into the wall of the van. I have three 100 lithium um, amp hour batteries from Life Blue, and these are all ratcheted down. Um, this is my Lexan cover that goes to my electrical system here. This cable here is coming directly from the alternator, um, which is a 280 amp alternator that's in the front that comes into the system. So with my battery system, I have three ways of charging these batteries. Number one is alternator, number two is solar, and number three is if I plug in my uh, Magnum um, 4000 watt inverter, it will also charge the batteries as well. Then with this, I have a 4000 watt uh, invertum, which is Magnusign. I have my breaker panel here, along with my charge controller, um, sky blue with 200 watts of solar that I have on the roof. Here you can see we have the L track um, for all the tie downs. Here I have all my tools, all the stuff that's required to drive on the beach, my shovels, my flares, my additional fire um, extinguisher. I put LED strip lighting in. Then back here, these are my 
uh, Pico chairs. I absolutely love these. This is a table that we bring on the beach. And like I said, then this whole whole um, bed system can come out in a matter of 10, 10 minutes. And then the last thing that I want to show you is I have an 18 gallon gray tank. Um, and I tried to keep this very hidden. So as you can see, it's underneath the frame. The only thing you'll be able to see are these um, Unistrut channels. And then back here, I've got a valve that then would just empty into a, a dump station. Thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome creation. Can you tell me a little bit about your background? Because this is an amazing build. Did you build other vans prior to this? Thanks, Patrick. Uh, no, I've never built vans before. I, I'm a little handy though as well. But my view is once I was doing this, all of my research was really done on YouTube and going to RV shows uh, and really going to the buildings where, the, where all the yachts and the boats are at as well. So I did document this whole series. I took over a thousand photos uh, and I am in the process of completing a build series that fully document the entire build process from the flooring, insulation, everything. So there's about 20 chapters in the YouTube series that I'm putting together now. Well, wow, that's going to be helpful information for someone that's actually building their own van that might be going through similar struggles that you might have had early on trying to figure everything out. You got to figure, like I said in a lot of videos, the human hours that it takes to oh. think it up, research, go online, find the products, buy them, open the boxes, and then build it. Like the building versus the research and everything else kind of equals each other out. Right. And I saw a little book in there earlier that you had documented some stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing that I've done is, is, is when I went through this whole series, I'm a little analytical, but I actually put together what my van goals were. Um, and then even with my van goals, once we identified the goals, it was from there that we identified what specification van that we needed. So at that point in time, we knew that we needed the Sprinter, uh, the Sprinter van, and we wanted the 170 wheelbase. And then the other thing too is, this is the QR code to the build series of the entire um, YouTube channel, and there's 20 chapters in the build series. So there's a lot of a lot of detail that's so, there. So you guys can scan that QR code, or I'm gonna leave a link below the video to his YouTube channel so you guys could follow along and see what else what what's next. What's next? That's a good thing. I the other thing too is on my uh, we're in the process of finishing up the electrical uh, portion right now, and even in there we're gonna get into detail of here we'll actually get into how many amp hours each of the components of the van is pulling down to determine what battery size that you should get. That so. is excellent information because that's very helpful. You buy a product, you can read the box and the packaging and see how many amps it draws, but right. to get like real world feedback from these yeah. products is, is excellent. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for thank taking the you. time today. Awesome build. Uh, hopefully I'll see you out on Island Beach State Park because right. I'm out there cycling all the time. Oh, there you this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. We'll see you soon. Thank you.